Hey everyone, this is Ross, and lately I've noticed that a lot of people are doing vids on the nitrogen cycle. And those vids are great, and they explain the basics of the nitrogen cycle, but most of them don't explain uh, enough about nitrates and ways to remove them. Because once I've explained the general nitrogen cycle, people are puzzled what to do with nitrates, because they are still toxic to fish. Um, so. First of all, I'm going to explain the basic nitrogen cycle. Now I'm going to go on to nitrates and how to remove them. Because um, a lot of beginners watch my videos, so I'm just going to explain the full thing. So first of all, as you can see, I've got too much time on my hands because I've actually drew out a diagram. Um, right, so let's get started. So first of all, uh, toxic ammonia comes from uneaten fish food that settles to the bottom of your aquarium and rots. Uh, poisonous ammonia also comes from fish's gills and fish's poo. So ammonia is then released. It's toxic to all types of fish and they'll die uh, from it in very small amounts. Or they'll get ammonia poisoning which is quite bad. Then a friendly form of bacteria comes along and transforms th those ammonia into nitrite. Now nitrite is still harmful to fish even in small amounts. Um, so that nitrite is then converted into less harmful nitrates by another type of friendly bacteria. Nitrates are only harmful in large levels. So if you have small and moderate levels of nitrates, your fish will be absolutely fine. Nitrates are always present in nature in small amounts, so it'll be fine if you just have a bit. But um, over the course of a week, your nitrate levels will slowly start to creep back up and it'll become toxic to fish so you've got to think of a way to remove these and there's three main ways first way is by doing water changes one water change of 25% to 50% weekly should be sufficient for all tanks it just removes those nitrate levels and it brings them very low and it preserves the beneficial bacteria in the process. Um, the second way to do it is by aquatic plants. All aquatic plants take some nitrates from the water. It's a fertilizer um, for plants. So some plants don't take much nitrates. Other plants take lots of nitrates. If you want some plants that take out lots of nitrates from the water, I'd suggest floating plants such as water hyacinths, water sprite, um, duckweed, just floating plants like that because they actually rely on just the water to stay alive. Um, that's where they get all the nutrition and whatnot. So they're going to be pulling out a lot of nitrates from the water column. And they're not going to take out as much nitrates as a water change, but they, they do a bit. Um, I wouldn't rely on aquatic plants if I was you. I'd definitely do a water exchange once a week. Um, or your fish might die. I really wouldn't rely on plants. If you were going to rely on plants and you need a huge tank full of them and you'd need a few tiny fish. Um, but really you shouldn't rely on plants. Um, and the third type and the third way to remove nitrates is just by water movement. If you have an air stone on in your tank, uh, the bubbles will, will rise through the tank and nitrates and other pollutants will actually stick to them. Once a bubble reaches the surface, it will then pop and those nitrates will be released into the atmosphere. Um, water movement on the surface, like ripples, will also release nitrates, but not as much as an air stone. So the more airflow you have in your tank, generally the more nitrates are released back into the atmosphere. But yet again, this shouldn't be relied on to remove the majority of your nitrates. You should always rely on a water change. 25% to 50% weekly is great. Alright, so that's all I really had to say. I hope you enjoyed this vid. And if you learned anything, then please leave a nice comment. Please like the vid and please subscribe. Bye.